introduce yourself? Hi, uh, my name is Eric Corrales. I'm the property manager here at Laverne Woods Apartments. Uh, do you have any regrets? Any regrets? Uh, I got a regret. Um, I didn't finish school before I joined the military. <laughs> That's one regret. I should have gotten my degree before I joined the military. And why is that? Uh, because when you join the military with a degree, you get a, um, a higher ranking in the military or you can go in as an officer. So you're already in as a leadership position. As towards when I joined, I was kind of halfway on my degree. Uh, so I uh, started from scratch. Basically went from the lowest ranking and made my way up. Yeah. And so what, did, what was your position in the military? I used to be a logistics specialist. So how did you transition from that to your job as a property manager? When I, um, when I left active duty in, um, in 2015, uh, that's something that I was, uh, um, as a logistics specialist, is usually someone that works in warehousing or administrative. So I look at a field close to that, and um, I had friends already that they were in, in um uh, in uh, property management and that's when I said you know what let me try this but they were like okay we'll give you a property manager no 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 I'll start from the beginning so they gave me leasing consultant you know the lowest and then from there we made my way up when was that? Uh, well starting from I immediately started like the month after I got out a month after I started doing property management How old were you well in 2015 I was around 20 26, yeah. 20. Was that change difficult? Was that? Was that change difficult? Uh, it was difficult because I was very strict back then. I had the military mind, but I mean, of course I adjusted to it. Can you elaborate on the military mind? What's that like? The military mind is just being organized, getting to a goal every day and accomplishing it focus on the mission, the overall the mission, and just, you know, and make sure you hit that mark, in other words. Um, so it was just so strict that you had to get these things done that day, no matter what, you know. So that's how it was. And do you still carry that with you? At uh, some point I do, for organization, because if not I'm just going to be like, ah, uh, distracted, and get nothing done. <laughs> And do you like that? Yeah, yeah, I do like it because before then I was such a shy, quiet kid that if I didn't do anything, I wouldn't push myself. Now I'm motivating myself, you know. So what made you join? A um, few reasons. Uh, one was just a financial need. I was running out of money. I was in Santa Monica College and I was running out of money. Uh, but uh, the main one was uh, just helping out my mom. You know, my dad was in the picture, but not really. So, uh, and I'm the oldest, so I had to help out mom with that. Would you say your childhood shaped you? Say it again. Would you say your childhood shaped you? Yeah, yeah, it did. It did shape me. How? It uh, it was one of those things. Either I could just blame my dad for not being there for me and just do the wrong things or say, you know what, I need to step up and help out the family. And then... That's what you chose to do. Chose that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that a difficult choice? It was. It was, because I could just say, hey, I'm a teenager. I just want to enjoy my, my time, you know? I don't need to be taking care, care of my brother and sister. But I said, you know what, let me move out those Friday nights, Saturday night going out type of deals and stay home and take care of them. So what flipped the switch? Uh, the switch was that my mom needed that help. Mom needed that help, then it made me be more responsible, then it made me think, hey, I can do that in the military and get some financial help, then that. And how so it's just, when you joined the military? Wow, uh, I was 20 years old. Five years military? No, I'm sorry. When I came out, I was 35. I said 25. Yeah, I was 35. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, wow, 10 years in the military. Yeah, so okay. 20, 35, 15 years. 15, oh sorry, my mom's yeah. yeah. What did you learn? Huh? <laughs> what did I learn? Um, I'll make it basic because <laughs> I can't say uh, too much information. But you mean travel around the world? When they say that, it's true. You do travel around the world. Some places you like, some places you don't like. You know, uh, the job can be really hard sometimes, and other times can be very rewarding as well. And did you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. Overall, I did enjoy it very well. And do you see the military shaping your life? The military did shape my life, yeah. So you, you, does that affect your future? Does it does. Mm -hmm. It does affect my future. Where, where do you see yourself going? Um, well, I already got out. Sure. <laughs> Property That's management. Uh, for now, it's just, you know, finding that new opportunity that will help me grow into regional management or help out an owner you know, purchase housing or into the real estate. Just think the next step. That's what I, I've been trained to do. You know. So uh, your, your main focus is real estate? You love real estate? Real estate slash property management. Okay. And do you, do you want to own houses? Is that what you're looking to do? That's house? one thing. Uh, that's one of the things that I'm looking into. Do I want to? Yes. Um, is it part of the plan? Yes. I just don't know where is it going to fit, you know? Do you have any fears? Fears? Oh, we all have fears. I have fears, yeah. What are your fears? Um, the whole uh, financial fear, of course. You know, I don't want to be in debt too much, but it helps being in debt because you're building your credit that way, you know? Um, that and then just fear, of course, of losing a loved one. Uh, fear of just not doing your job right. You know, I might be sitting here, but a lot of projects are just going throughout the whole time frame and residents are concerned about this and that. So all of that, I have to just take it in, be very patient, <laughs> you know? And that's my fear that, I'm, oh my gosh, I'm gonna lose it, you know, as a human, because we all have those emotions, fear of that, you know? Uh, it's just a long list of fears, but you just gotta control them day by day in every event. Do you have a lot of pressure being a property manager? Oh yeah, I do. I do have a lot of pressure as a property manager. Is it from the tenants mostly? No, it's uh, from both sides. From both sides, uh, from uh, the tenants, the owners. Oh yeah, and the city. <laughs> the city as well, because we gotta keep all the policies and rules they have for the county. And they have their strict on that? Um, some aren't, some aren't. It really depends on the situation. Oh, okay. Do you believe in God? Yes, I do. And why do you believe in God? Um, just because of my personal experiences of uh, miracles, things that you would not expect that would happen has happened in my life. Uh, people, friends around me, you know, that's seen it and experienced it. Um, Can you tell us about those miracles that happened? There? One of them, one of them was with my pastor. Um, she was 65. Um, and we were, that was when we used to live in LA, and way before, that was when I was in high school. She was given basically the, she was given the, the, the notice that she's just going to die from cancer in a year. So that's all they gave her. And um, that was really sad because of course she had a whole congregation of people that, you know, that she would lead and teach us. And uh, lo and behold, uh, in, they were noticing that her, that her physical her body was slowly just killing this cancer, you know, and and in two years, instead of that little time frame they gave her in two years, she was completely cancer free. So after that, it was just her not not having cancer. Um, doctors even did call it a miracle. Um, so that and then uh, just other stuff that you just you know just like you. you more personal to you. More personal to me. It's just with my family. You know, we. 
we've always been through financial issues when we were younger because my mom she just you know did everything by herself uh, so we would always have that help that extra hand of help if it's not from a ride someone out of nowhere would just drop off groceries or a uh, friend would help us out and it just we would always pray about it but it would arrive on that moment that we really did need like if it would have been the next day we would have lost the place we lived or bills would have you know escalated or, or I mean well you know what I mean they would have been past due but we've always seen that and it's always one of those things that we pray to God and he doesn't want us to worry about it not to get into much of the religion but if you have faith you will put your whole, you know, entire life in that faith, whatever it is, whatever religion is. And that's what we did. We put it and we wouldn't worry about it and it just happened, you know, it would just happen and, and we see it. And did you say your faith is strong? I have faith. It's strong, but I always need some more. You always need. As a human, you're never going to finish learning. And then that's a spiritual uh, uh, side as well you know you always need it's like working out if you don't start working out if, I mean if you're working out and then you stop out of nowhere you're just gonna lose all those muscles and that's how it is in the religion or you studying all that stuff you know you think you're a good person uh, I could say I could say I'm I'm a decent good person I'm not I'm definitely not a saint <laughs> <laughs> uh, but of course, as a human, we all have our flaws, so I could say I'm a decent good person. And what makes a good person? A good person is just um, putting others ahead of you, um, being there for your family as much as you can. You can't always just go overboard and you just, you know, lose financially and yourself uh, on your family's problems. Uh, so that's that's a good person, you know. That you know they just put everyone in front of you. Really do um, reach to higher goals, but not stepping over someone <laughs> as well, you know. And what makes a bad person? A bad person is just honestly um, someone that just doesn't take account accountability of their actions, you know. Um, a bad person can also be, you know, someone who's just not caring either. Uh, so a bad person can be, you know, defined in many ways as well. Can you tell about some of your hobbies? Hobbies? Um, one, um, <laughs> one is just playing video games, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm into the whole uh, the, the Pokemon thing. Oh, yeah. I I like them and like playing them, but I'm not like detail in them. You know, I like playing them because it's just fun. You know, my fiance and I we play with them. Uh, that and then of course the movies, the whole film experience. And like I told you earlier, I, I study film. We did film uh, uh, in high school and in, in some portion of college, but yeah, those are my hobbies. And, uh, do you want to film more? Is that something you would do? Filming, yes, uh, but this current job just takes a lot out of me. But yeah, yeah, maybe later on just talk, start some TikTok videos, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, TikTok? Yeah, yeah. TikTok videos, yeah. yeah. You like TikTok? Yeah, yeah, some are funny. Others are just horrible. Uh, it's what you put in it, you know, yeah. that matters, you know. Mm -hmm. What makes them horrible? Uh, the content. Mm -hmm. I'll just keep it at that, the content, you know. Yeah. But what makes it great? The content as well, you know. You know so, <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you, Eric. <laughs> thank you.